What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quarter, and you're hoping you have a wonderful day. I don't know how many of you played the horror game series Five Nights at Freddy's. I, for one, haven't. I do have some of the plush from winning a, at Dave & Buster's, but I've been relatively unfamiliar with the series until recently. Um, and it would appear that uh, SJWs or far leftists on Twitter are trying to cancel their creator for its creator, sorry, for um, donating money to Republicans, something that has absolutely zero to do with the game itself or whether or not it's good. And they're bending over backwards to try and pretend that suddenly the game sucks now, even though it's been wildly successful and has multiple releases, multiple games, and is an unstoppable juggernaut in many ways. And of course, People like Jim Sterling and people that don't play video games, not saying Jim doesn't, but other people who don't play video games, uh, have been trying to cancel its creator. But what's great about it is he doesn't care and he will not apologize. This is how we stop cancel culture. This is how you fight back against it by saying, I'm absolutely not going to bend the knee. And it makes me want to buy the game. Maybe I'll stream it one time this week. I think uncancel culture, supporting people that refuse to bend the knee is more fun than uh, than trying to boycott stuff because boycotts mean you miss out on a lot of stuff. Uncancel culture means you get to enjoy a lot of stuff. You see this article from PC Gamer, Five Nights at Freddy's creator Scott Cawthorn said his support of Donald Trump is something that he will not apologize for. And if you see a lot of the response you see, here's me in here, good, almost ratioing them. Um, his creation sucked anyway, and I'm very terrified of horror games and jump scares, and this creation is just boring. I mean, good. His games are successful, and they're fun to play and have a big community around them. Just because you think the games are bad does not make the game bad. And be ready. This year, there's a AAA Five Night at Freddy's game releasing made by a big studio, and there's a lot of hype behind it. I, I don't know. I mean, good. Oh, the games suck anyway. Let's see. Let's see who thinks the games suck. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, says the guy with the weed whacker haircut. Yeah, exactly. His political preferences have nothing to do with gaming at all. He shouldn't have to apologize for anything at all. I love this. I am so filled with hope that... The larger gaming community is is rising up and pushing back against this nonsense that it doesn't matter. Look, I know that you know companies like Ubisoft and and um, many others. Uh, heck, how about Wizards of the Coast are wildly progressive. But if the game's really good, then you shouldn't deprive yourself of it. Really, you shouldn't. There were games like Battlefield 5 or whatever last or two years ago, Genderfield 5, where EA told us not to buy the game. And that was fine. That was easy to skip it. But if the game's really good, then there are other ways to enjoy the game. Or certainly there are always sales and things like that that you can get around to later. Really, nobody's buying this. He doesn't need to apologize for anything. He's in the right. Of course, people who support Donald Trump will probably say, you know, um, you know that this is right because they also support. But I'm saying that it's far more based because he refused to apologize. Five Nights at Freddy's creator won't apologize for Trump support, and he's ready to be canceled for financial contributions made to Republican candidates, including Donald Trump, though there's no indication of the canceling. Yet... Except you tried on Twitter and you hacks are writing these articles, right? Isn't that indication of it? Five Nights at Freddy's creator Scott Cawthorn has confirmed a report that he made significant contributions to Republican Party political action committees and candidates during Devin Nunez, Ben Carson, Mitch McConnell, and Donald Trump, saying that he's prepared to get counsel and retire from the Five Nights community if people believe that he's doing more harm than good. Some of Cawthorn's publicly available donation records were shared on Twitter on June 10th and can be seen on OpenSecrets.org. It's, re it's Republican across the board except for a $2,500 donation to Tulsi Gabbard. So it's not Republican across the board. By the way, these amounts of money, the amounts of money that people are bent out of shape with are tiny. It's like $2,500 here, $2,500 there. Tiny in comparison for a guy that's probably a hundred millionaire. I mean, a lot of money for any one of us to donate, but for him, 
relatively small. Um, reaction in the community was largely negative, but I thought there was no attempt to cancel him, particularly among members of the LGBTQ community, which makes up a significant portion of the Five Nights fan base. I doubt that. The LGBTQ community does not make up a significant portion of almost any community. It seems unlikely that they would make up a significant portion of a video game community that is not directed towards that community in any way. I mean, you could argue that the LGBTQ community is a portion, a significant portion of people that play some sort of video game about pride or something like that. But Five, Night, Five Nights as Freddy, from what I understand, has nothing to do with one's orientations or anything like that. Uh, Cawthorn acknowledged that disappointment in the message to Reddit earlier today in which he confirmed that the donation reports are accurate. To say the last few days have been surreal would be an understatement, he wrote. I've debated greatly how to best address this, including not addressing it at all, but with so many from the LGBTQ community and the fan base that I love, that's not an option. I'd like to think that the last seven years would have given me the benefit of the doubt, however, to, uh, regards, uh, in regards to how I try to treat people, but there I was, trending on Twitter for being a homophobe, getting doxxed with people threatening to come to my house. My wife is six weeks pregnant, and she spent last night in fear because she was of being what was said online. She already had been struggling with her pregnancy, so seeing her afraid really scared me. All of this because I exercised my right and my duty as an American citizen to vote for and support candidates who I felt who could best run the country. For everyone, and that's someone that I won't apologize, something I won't apologize for. That's awesome. Absolutely love to see it. Cawthorn said the candidates he supported included men, women, white people, black people, Republicans, and Democrats. He was correct. And he specifically defended his backing of Kimber Kimberly Clackick um, because I believe she really cared for the American community, African-American community, and they wanted to put them, pull them out of poverty. And Tulsi Gabbard, who he says he felt would have been good and fair president, even though he disagreed with her on specific policies. He also commented on what no doubt is the most controversial part of the report, his support of then-president Donald Trump. I felt he was the best man to fuel a strong economy and stand up to America's enemies abroad, of which there are many, he wrote. Even if there were candidates who had better things to say to the LGBT community directly and bigger promises to make, I believe their stances on other issues would have ended up doing much greater harm to those communities than good. Cawthorn claimed to be supportive of creators regardless of their backgrounds and said as a result he's worked with a very diverse group of people over the course of his career. He said that's not going to change but neither will his approach to other aspects in life. I'm a Republican, I'm a Christian, I'm pro-life, I believe in God, he said. I also believe in equality and in science and in common sense. Despite what some people may say, all of these things can go together. That's not an apology or a promise to change. That's the way it's always been. Ooh, I love this. If I get canceled, then I get canceled. I don't do this for the money anymore. I do it because I enjoy it. If people think I'm doing more harm than good now, then maybe it's better that I get canceled and retire. I would accept that. I've had a fulfilling career. Besides, most things that people can take from you are things that will never have much value to begin with. And while the immediate reaction on Twitter was largely negative, the response to Cawthorn's post on Reddit has been very different. Many posters expressed gratitude for the Five Nights at Freddy's games and Cawthorn's responsiveness to the fans. And while there are some indications of disappointment, there seems to be virtually no interest in canceling him, oh, much to the chagrin of games urinalists. There have also been a few comparisons to Minecraft creator Notch, who was excised from his creation after selling it to Microsoft for $2.5 billion over multiple widely criticized posts on social media and hopes Cawthorn won't suffer a similar fate. It's like Minecraft without Notch, one wrote about Cawthorn's possible censure. It's a huge hole in the community that we can't fill to this day. I love, uh, I love that, you know, Five Nights is Freddy. You could see 15.1 thousand upvotes. I don't understand all this stuff, Reddit flair. I've never really understood it, but lots of that. Uh, you know, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think many people, how do I say, outside of Twitter, had any real interest in canceling him. Um, I'll probably pick up one of his games because we as consumers really have to start thinking about supporting people who won't bend the knee. Look, you may not agree with, you know, his stances, you know, I, for one, uh, I find myself being pro-choice, you know, I, you know, people ask me all the time, 
well, not all the time, but it comes up, you know, are you pro-choice or pro-life or whatever? I'm pro-humans making their own decisions. I'm pro the government not deciding what you can do with your body. I, for one, uh, you know, find myself being pro-life, but I also don't consider myself the judger of anybody else. Um, and so is, I mean, that's, I'm not even religious and I know that that's in the Bible. So, I mean, there, there are things, that I guess what I'm saying that I don't agree with, uh, Scott Cawthorn on. Um, but I think we all need to take a step back and start thinking about, you know, supporting people that refuse to bend the knee, which is exactly what Scott Cawthorn's doing here. And it's extraordinarily rare in the video game community. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.